Welcome back to Spiced Up Outdoors. I'm glad you stopped by. I'm glad you're watching today. Um, today, we are going to revisit an old episode that involves these power boxes right here. We've got our old model right over here and our new model right here. Um, this one's a lot more simple. It's got the, most of the same features, but we slimmed down on quite a few things that weren't necessary. Also, the inside of both of these looks way cleaner and way more efficient maybe there's more space inside and it doesn't look like a rat's nest of wiring um, if you can't tell I've kind of made a hobby out of making these um, this one back here is gonna have a special purpose and I'm probably gonna make one more power box right here stay tuned and uh, we'll show you what I changed and what I could have done better on this first one and answer quite a few of you guys' questions that I've had so far on the first video all right, we'll start with the outside layout of these boxes. They're generally the same um, as far as features go. They both have the 12 volt plug, 12 volt plug, USB and USB, voltage meter and the on off switch for that. And then the on off switch for this one here. The old style has an ASE port here I really didn't use this as much as I thought I was going to, mainly during ice fishing. Um, so I axed that for this one. Um, if you noticed on both of these, there's reflective tape all around these, um, just in case I, you know, pull a me and lose an orange box in the woods. So hopefully it's reflective enough. Um, on to this side, you'll notice I'm also down a light here and a light on this side. That is because all three of these lights is overkill to the max. Um, it is seriously not necessary whatsoever. Just this one, just plenty to light up an area. A new feature on this new one is the night light is what I'm calling it. Uh, this night light is for like when you bring this camping and you don't want to turn on the big white light in the middle of the night because you're gonna blind yourself. So you turn on a softer blue light and that gives off plenty of, of area coverage in your, in your tent just so you can get out, go to the bathroom or whatever. Something, another thing I asked was the voltage meter on the top. Uh, originally, I had the idea that I'd want to see when my battery dipped below 20 volts from the original source. And then it goes through the reducer. And then that's where you'd see the 12 volts here. I would turn all this on, but I don't have a battery in it or a battery that is charged. So, moving on to the important part. Once you move inside of these, you are going to notice the difference right away. So this was the old one, or is the old one. Basically, you ran a six and a half amp hour battery. I'm not gonna go too in depth on this one because you guys can just watch the video for this one. Um, you use the knock off DeWalt battery, plug it in there, and there's just enough room for it to squeeze right there. But everything else in there is a disaster. All of these uh, spade connectors and these tapping wire taps, all of this is just unnecessary. And what else is unnecessary and overkill is a separate fuse for each single item. It's not needed. It really isn't. Just one single 5 or 10 amp fuse is plenty. Moving on to the new one. A lot more organized and a lot more clean. Uh, if you notice the switches that I have, actually, no matter which way you wire it, it leaves one of these wires just out dangling here, so I just heat shrinked around it. But anyway. Um, here's the other thing you might notice is there is an actual battery inside of this. So I'm doing this now because it's a lot easier to be able to charge a, a regular standard 12 volt battery versus bringing my drill charger with me every time I go somewhere. This one, I can either hook up to my wheeler to charge while I'm riding the wheeler. I can um, hook it up to a solar panel if I want to run an SAE port on this side to there. Then I can charge it that way. So this is a 
10 amp hour lead acid battery so it is going to be heavier than that lithium battery over there but it is a lot more flexible as far as what i can use it for so let's do a side by side comparison and which one do you guys feel safer using um this one i did a few new things <clears throat> so in this one you notice that i use these uh spade connectors uh, just in case I wanted to disconnect everything and change it around and whatnot. Um, again, not necessary. My daisy chains on here, way too much wire than it's, than it's needed. Um, so we, we as in me, I guess, switched up to using these. These are um, solder butt connectors, heat shrinks butt connectors. So all you got to do is you put your wire inside there, twist it together. And then that silver piece right there is actually some solder and it just the blue part melts down into the adhesive that heat shrinks inside there and then once the adhesive melts shortly after that middle piece right there uh, melts off uh, and like i said i did not use a fuse in this one all right well i i did use a fuse in this one but it's different than this one i went with a simple inline fuse it's really all that's necessary. So if you look in here, you'll see the inline fuse is actually right here. Uh, and then the last thing I changed on these is the spade connectors that you use to plug into the switches and the outlets. I've got these 90 degree spade connectors. It is a little bit more difficult to get a quality crimp on these connectors, but it's nice in such a tight area like this uh, to be able to make space because as it is, these new switches that I ordered are pushing right up against the battery and I'm not really a fan of having my, my wires crimped at a 90 down there. Um, but it, it opens up space up here and in this backside here, in the backside is where the battery charger will be stored at. So there's the battery charger, just a simple wall plug with some alligator clips so all you have to do is pull these terminals off and this way you can actually carry it with you if i can get it in there the way i had it before there we go so it can fit in there so you bring your charger with you wherever you go um, a version that i made for my dad i actually pulled off these alligator clips right there and i actually put on a SAE connector because his also has the SAE port on it. Um, that way I can put, I put this one on the end and then ran it directly to the battery to solar charge and whatever else way like this to charge it. The next one I'm going to end up doing, and this will be the final power box. Not this box in particular, because this has my, like, my roadside kit in it, but this big guy here. Um, so this is probably bigger than a 50 cal ammo box. If not, yeah, it, it is a lot bigger than a 50 cal ammo box. This is more of like a 5.56 five, size ammo box, maybe a little smaller. Um, but this... I was shown by a friend of mine a pretty cool radio that fits in here and something this size i'll stack like three or four of them batteries inside here so i can run that radio while i'm riding the wheeler and again i could this was his idea um to connect a this power box to the wheeler so the wheeler actually would charge the power box as i'm using it and as i'm riding on the trail great idea joe uh so this is your shout out for that as your idea Thank you. All right. And the final thing that people were asking for when it came to these power boxes was actually a wiring diagram. Um, the wiring diagram is right here. And as I'm talking, the to explain this wiring diagram here a little bit, the red on the diagram shows the, uh, the positive and the black shows the negative. Um, you run all of the wires through the fuse and, um, 
the negative obviously does not need a fuse. If you really want to, I guess you could, but it's not necessary. Uh, so yeah, that pretty much does it for this quick episode. Uh, we, if, if Minnesota wants to cooperate for once, we should have some new content coming up. It is, I, I just got a kayak, so that'll be fun. Um, I just took it out in the water the other day and played with not falling over in the freezing cold water. So I'm going to try and get comfortable with, uh, fishing in it and see where it goes from there. Let me know if I should make a power box that is specifically for the, the kayak itself. Um, I know there is a lot less space in the kayak and it's a sit in kayak, not a sit on top one. Um, so I don't know what accessories I could power, maybe a, a depth finder or a graph or something like that. But let me know. If you have any questions with these power boxes, you can hit me up on Instagram and I will do my best to reply to you. Otherwise, we'll just leave a comment below. And I did my best to reply to those on the last power box video as well. So thanks again for watching Spiced Up Outdoors, everyone. Make sure you like and you subscribe to the channel and do all those great things. We've got a lot of great summertime content coming and I look forward to sharing all of it with you. We're gonna put a well at the cabin. Once I hit 500, I'm hoping to hit 500 this summer. I was sleeping, what has, did I say a 36 hour challenge on the lake? I think I did, of you guys watching me suffer and not catch any fish because I'll be surviving off the lake. Should be doable, but we'll see. Get me to 500 and we'll do it. Thanks guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.